Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Yes, welcome back everyone. This state of mind, this word means so much, but we minimize it and some of us may not truly understand what it means, myself included at one point. Remember I used to uh, go to church, still do occasionally, right? And Mm -hmm. people would say, peace be with you, peace be with you. And I would say, I'd say the same thing back to them. I didn't really get it. I didn't really understand what it was all about until I realized I didn't have any peace. And then I made changes and I got to that point. I call it the quiet calm where there's peace. Now take all of that and translate that Mm -hmm. into your line of work. Maybe you're a leader. Maybe you just want comfort at work. Peace in your decision-making. That's a part of what we're going to talk about today. And he helps people find their peace all the time when it comes to (laughs) leading teams. Coachingforrelevance.com is his business. He's Randy Swaim. He's back with us. Hey, Randy, how are you doing? Good, good. Glad to be here as always. And uh, uh, good good to hear about it. And that's that's definitely where we'll sort of focus today. Yeah, I'm loving it. Uh, And I never, and this is why you're fantastic at what you do, I never even thought about having peace in a decision-making process. You want to know that you made the best decision and finding that peace there. Where where do you want to begin today? Yeah, well, let let me just say that last week, for those that listened to the show last week, when uh, when Jill was the host and everything, we we just started on on that concept of peace. And and where we, you were talking about when you, you know, still go to church every now and then and stuff. Um, Where this came from was in a, um, uh, Uh, It was initiated by our uh, kind of an assistant pastor, but he's a youth pastor for our church. He does a real good, he and his wife do a real good job with working with kids and rising stars and all that kind of stuff. But I I walked up to him afterwards and I shook his hand. I said, you have my compliments on your message because I'll tell you what, that's been a key aspect of my development through my life and journey and stuff of of that piece. And it's so critical. But what I want to do, what I thought I would do today is take that and expand it a little bit when you go forward. Um, And because it's, it, it can be a little bit deeper than most people realize. And what I would throw out to people out there that are listening initially is if I were to ask you, how would you define that piece in you? How would you define that? How would you experience it? What does it take to get you there? And as a coach, I would probably kind of lead a little bit of a discussion on those kind of uh, topics with them. Because when you think about peace, I'll tell you this, that so many people today, when they think of this word peace, here's what they think. They think of this where they're just sitting in the chair and they're just leaning back and they're just doing this. Mm. You know what? That's not total peace. And it's not really the peace that you're sort of talking about with this. And you got to realize that peace is not a full direction this way or that way, it varies. And what I mean by that is, if you think about it, peace is not just sitting there in a peaceful thing where nothing's going on and you get to just sort of think or, you know, have some coffee or whatever kind of thing. It's deeper than that. And I, and when you think about the aspect of peace from a leadership standpoint, this is huge. Not only in do you have that peace within yourself, even when you're not, you know, you're having to deal with something uh, that's challenging in your team. And keep in mind, this aspect of peace does not mean, well, you know what, I'm in control and by gosh, I'm just going to do it. So, you know, you just better do what I tell you to do. That's not peace. You know, peace is a lot calmer than that. But when you think about it, there's there's some other aspects about this, too, uh, that when you're disciplining your people, do they experience a a level, it sounds kind of crazy to say this, but it's true, do they experience a level of peace that tells them they want to get this better on this and they have some peace with it? It's not just because you're going to fire them if they don't, but it's they have a degree of peace and positive experience inside of them that makes them want to move this forward and to overcome that, perhaps. The other part of this is, and I shared this a long time ago on a radio, one of our radio shows, and it was so long ago, I don't even remember who the host was. But if you think I, about it. I can see it, we make a mark on you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. But 
but I shared this with you, and I and, and those that have you know uh, looked a lot of this will probably be sort of aware of this. But you may remember it. I'll just share this with you. But it's another good picture of how this piece makes a difference, even in challenging situations, because uh, this happened back in the uh, 1990s. And the girl that I was dating at the time, we uh, went to a, a little uh, Western dance uh, place over in uh, Dallas and stuff. And we were uh, just dancing together and stuff like that and had a good time. But we both had to work the next day. So we were both leaving and I was walking her out to her car. And, I, and I'm and i just going to say this really quick because, like I said, if somebody was listening to the shows, you know, a long time ago, they may remember the story. But the bottom line is that we walked out to the car and there was a a, 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 a young professional looking gentleman and his girlfriend, um, uh, girlfriend or wife, I don't even know really, but it was one of the two that were standing there. And there were three thugs that were causing a problem. And you could tell that the three thugs were wanting to really take them down, take them out and stuff like this. And as I kind of watched from, we were over at my girlfriend's car but I could be aware of everything that's going on, and I take I took notice, and I could tell out of the three thugs, there was one guy that didn't want to be there. He didn't want any of this to be happening. I could tell there was another guy that was being quiet, and he was like a stick of dynamite. If something went crazy, he could blow up. And then there was one thug who was causing all the problems and thumping his chest and threatening and all this kind of stuff. And I quietly told my girlfriend, I said, listen, if – this happens and this is a picture of the piece of what i'm talking about i said if i have to go over there you get in the car and you lock your door and you don't come out till i tell you to okay and she she her eyes were this big around and she said yeah and i said okay well there came a time when the big thug you know kind of thing the big one grabbed the professional guy from the back and and his girlfriend was sort of in the back and stuff, but he grabbed him like this, and he's starting to just go crazy. And the professional guy, in an effort of trying to help himself, is sitting there biting his hand. Well, I said, okay. I took two steps in that direction and then stopped and turned back, and my girlfriend, with her eyes this big, was going to get into her car. And I walked over there, and all I did is I kind of grabbed the thug's hand like this, and I leaned down to the professional guy said it's okay let him go and as soon as he released his te- the teeth from his hand and i could feel that i pulled the thug's hand out and and twisted his wrist into a wrist lock and put my other hand in and spun the professional guy out and stepped in the between them and i looked at the thug right in the eyes in a very calm way and i said listen you can yell scream shout thump your chest whatever you want but the fight is done it's over mm. And there was a couple of times when he started to do that, but then he thought he saw I was in the way and he didn't. And what was amazing is there there came one point where the guy that didn't want to be there said, oh, I I don't want all this to happen. I said, listen, the best you can do is get your buddies out of here (laughs) kind of thing, you know. But what happened is they ended up leaving and and um, and they, uh, uh, you know, uh, the the professional guy and his girlfriend were okay. I saw the girlfriend over at a car. She was like, and her eyes were sort of down like this. And she's, oh, you know, kind of thing. And I calmly walked over to her and I said, are you okay? And she said, yeah. And then she looked at me with eyes and with peace in her eyes. And she said, thank you. And I said, my pleasure. And I went over and I got in the car with my girlfriend. And my girlfriend, as I went over there, my girlfriend got out of the car, <laughs> came around And one of the things she said is, she said, one thing that was really interesting, I said, what's that? And she said, you could tell those guys didn't know what to do when you were outnumbered, but you were doing it the way you were doing. And you know what? You weren't threatening. You weren't whatever. You were connecting. And I said, Mm -hmm. what what a lot of people that hear this don't realize is that, that the big difference, I had a whole lot of peace in here about what I was doing, why I was doing it but also how I was going to do it. It wasn't about me threatening the the thugs and it wasn't about me picking up a stick and, you know, knocking them out or anything like that. It was just connecting in a way. And the way I did it was extremely peaceful. Now they got the message. They probably didn't want to mess with me, but it wasn't because I was threatening or anything like that. And you know what? Even when you're in a challenging situation like that, you may have to act in a very deliberate, active, 
passionate going forward way but you know what still have peace in there it's not saying hey i'm just going to go out i'm it's my job to control this all this kind of stuff nope i didn't threaten those thugs i didn't say anything all i said is the fight's over that's it that's all i said and and it was Mm. interesting because when you look at this whole concept of peace inside of you you have to realize that that's a deeper bigger concept than most people realize and and the bottom line is even when you're going through something that's a challenging situation and you're stepping forward there should be a level of peace in here that causes you to not go crazy not stupid not ballistic not out of control but just you know making the right decision having the right vision the action steps Mm. and doing it in a way where not only do you have peace in here, but you might be able to engender peace in the other folks possibly. And like in that situation, I didn't threaten those guys. I mean, my vision was always about the third guy that was like on a stick of dynamite kind of thing, but he never got involved when I was there. Mm. And, and um, and you got to realize that with your team, even in a challenging situation, you got to have a degree of peace. And I'll throw another picture of this, that when you're, uh, you know, as you know, my background is military flying and fighters uh, in the F-4 Phantom. And uh, you know what? When you're having to make your decisions and you're having to maneuver your airplane in a dogfight or in a war situation, guess what? You still want to have that degree of peace in there where you're making the right decisions. You're seeing the facts that are involved. You're making the right calls to do the right thing that brings success. And that doesn't happen when you're out of control and blah, 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 you know, kind of thing. And and as you know, a lot of people today in our society have been built either from people or from even some movies that they watched or whatever, where they think all it is is for me to just generate your emotions and get you out of control where I can just tell you what to do and you just go do it. No, because guess what? When unexpected factors come on the scene, those emotions very often get them just simply in this mindset that we're supposed to go this way, do that, we'll do it, do do it, and that's it. They don't even look at the other factors coming on scene. They don't, they're not aware of the little tweaks that they may have to tweak on it to get to where they're going and things of that nature. Uh, and so when you, when you think of this degree of peace, it's not just all over here. It's not just sitting down and going, yeah, and having a Coke and, and just, uh, you know, enjoying the time. But it's having a degree of peace on what's going on where the situation is progressing, mm. what I'm doing, is it showing the, the benefits of what I need to do? And if I'm a leader, do I see that in my team? Do I see my in my team where they are developing that sense of peace within them? And, and you know this, I'm sure, Steve, that so many times today, if somebody's not just getting what they want and they just don't, it, it doesn't seem like they're just flat in control of what they want to do. They get all sorts of ticked off and all that kind of stuff. And guess what? That's not the purpose that you want to have the peace. Uh, When you have a a degree of peace with it, you can be more aware of the true factors that are involved. You can be more aware of the decision you want to make, the processing of your mental, uh, of your frontal lobe up here in your neuroscience in your brain can truly uncover the true step to be successful in this. And uh, if you're getting all your emotions in line, so your norepinephrine is going and controlling everything, you're probably not going to be able to do that. So, uh, so I throw that out just as something to think about. It's true in combat. It's true in, 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 uh, in challenging situations. It's true in leading your teams in an, uh, a rapidly changing, unpredictable uh, environment aligned with organizational maneuverability. But it's also... This aspect, when you have clarity on what the piece is, and and I shared this, I think in in uh, in another show a while back, where I had to discipline one person in what I uh, that worked for me, and and it wasn't like legal discipline. I just kind of sat down and shared with him what it was that uh, was wrong, but the way I did it made him fix it literally overnight. 
And it wasn't because I threatened him. It wasn't because I tried to control him. It's because I communicated it in such a way that he sort of had a degree of peace in him about what he could do to actually make the team better and help the team work together better and mm -hmm. things like that. And so when you think about this aspect of peace, it's what I talked about last week, but um, that uh, it, it's deeper. It's, it's a, a much more clear, deeper uh, picture than most people realize. It doesn't mean you just sit in your chair and sit back and drink some, you know, have some marshmallows and drink some Coke or whatever. No, nope, that's not peace. Peace is basically, even in the midst of, of a challenge, even in the midst, like I say, in the military, sometimes even in, in the midst of combat, having a degree of peace, not that tells you to shut your brain off, but you can have a degree of peace in the situation you're in so that you can be aware of the true str uh, uh, situational awareness factors and make the right decision to get the right overcome uh, outcome. Mm. And uh, so when you think about that aspect of peace that we were talking about last week, it, it's a key aspect that people have to think about. And guess what? In sales, same thing. It's one thing to try to make somebody say, I just want to buy your stuff so you'll shut up <laughs> or whatever you <laughs> right. know, kind of thing. But it's a whole other thing to, to build it in such a way that they really have peace with what this can do for them, perhaps. And it's not controlling them and it's not manipulating them. It's just doing it in such a way that they sense that, that building that peace where it's not distracting, it's not uh, controlling, but they go, you know what? Yeah, I want to buy that. Thanks, kind of thing. And so when you look at the whole aspect of teams and leadership and creating in your teams and building the synergy and the success in your teams to reach radical success, this aspect of peace is, is uh, very key in there uh, because it's if the peace is not there, things get distorted, things get distracted, people get into control freaks where, by gosh, it's just and, – and, and I've heard – uh, a number of uh, managers uh, say this before that when they're, when the way they chose to do it just didn't work, they just cast blame all for, for a couple of days. They simply just cast blame. Well, it should have been like this, but it wasn't, uh, it's their fault. It should have been like this. Well, guess what? That's not leadership. And so uh, when you think about this aspect of peace, it has a greater impact for what the team is trying to accomplish. And I just throw that out there with just some insights uh, uh, on it that just sort of follow up from what we talked about last week. Randy, I can't imagine what would have went down in that situation you described earlier if you, like most of us would have, puffed up your chest. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, you get it. Mm -hmm. all, all that would have done was sent your anxious energy to the other parties yep. and fired them up. And then, yep. then back and forth to a point where who knows what could have happened at that mm -hmm. point. But finding finding that piece, yeah. a couple of minutes left, how do you do that? Well, you, you got to kind of know your people. You got to know yourself. You got to uh, gain some insights on what it takes for you to sense that and experience that and feel it. And, and also in your teammates and start learning how. Uh, to do it. A lot of times that can be in the way the people treat you. A lot of times that can be in the way you're treating your people. And guess what? This member may, you know, you treat them slightly different than this one in order to do that, perhaps, you know, kind of thing. And, and so it, it's just an aspect about that, that, that a lot of people don't realize and don't think about. Um, because I'll tell you what, if you, if you kick things into where your brain's, you know, firing up norepinephrine, you know, the fight or flight chemical and all of this, guess what? You're probably not getting the job done. Mm. But if you fire it up in a way where they have peace, even in the challenging situation where they can process and visualize and think and decide and enact correctly that can make a huge, huge difference. And and as you said, my girlfriend said that right after she was watching that situation that I got involved in at that parking lot. And uh, because that's just one, uh, one subtle example of that. And it's, it's uh, 
but you got to kind of get a sense of getting to know yourself truly, getting to know your team truly. And that's a question you probably uh, need to answer and get a little bit of clarity on. What is it going to take for me to experience that and sense that? Because here's the thing, if I can do that, and if I can make it so that my team feels that and experiences that, guess what? We can probably make better decisions and reach higher success levels. Because I, I the have other to stuff's say, not getting in the way. Out of everything we've talked about, and it's all been important and impactful, uh, for me personally, this one is is higher up there. Because thank you, it says so much. If you're leading a team, and and I believe energy is everything. People can pick up on your energy. So if you're, we gotta make numbers. We gotta make numbers. All right, you know, you walk into a room. Hey, John, what's going on? Give me, give me the update. What's and and you have that lack of peace. They're gonna pick up on it. That's gonna get the anxiety fueled up in them. Yes, and it's just all gonna be counterproductive. Yes, yes. And a lot of times, if you can just ask the right questions without threatening or pressuring, guess what? They may gain a degree of peace and they may come up with some answers you never would have guessed. Well, because yeah, they had a moment, you know, to, yeah. to, you know, they always say, take some time to think. All of us, we're always got everything going on. You, I relish now free time to do nothing. Like literally yeah. sit and do and think. It's like people say to me, oh, you get, you know, hour and a half uh, train ride. You're going to be on a plane for three hours. Or, you know, I, I went to see a friend uh, play at a venue uh, a couple mm -hmm. of weeks ago, and it was about an hour and 10 minute ride. And somebody said, you're driving all the way out there. I'm like, yes, it's going to be yeah. wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? But, but, but again, this, this, this level piece, exactly what you said, you have, thank you for your com comment on that. Uh, but this is something that a lot of people in our society have no clue about. Yes. Um, and it, it, but it's an aspect that when you're talking about leading a team in a truly unpredictable, yeah. unexpected, rapidly changing environment, uh, guess what? Doing it in such a way, like I said, even in combat, if all you do is let your emotions go out of ways, you may not make the right decisions because a lot of people in today's world, and I think you probably have a sense of this, Steve, a lot of people in today's world think, I'm just going to fire you up so you'll just go the way I told you to and we're just going to kind of, guess what? That doesn't always work. No, many times and, it doesn't. And, and it's just yeah. counterproductive, even even in a, a, let's say, a relationship conflict where yeah, even, That's right. even with your you know, spouse, something comes up. Yep. Take a moment. <laughs> uh, yep. Want to take a moment to tell everybody coachingforrelevance.com is the website. He's the man that can move your life forward in many different areas, especially if you're looking to up your game in, in terms of leadership. No sales pressure, no high pressure, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Have a conversation. This is what we do here. This is what he does there. And uh, and change, change, find some peace. <laughs> find <laughs> there some you peace. go, man. Yeah. There you go. That's Randy, true. Randy, thank you so much for today. Appreciate it. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll look forward to seeing you again, brother. Same. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Randy Swain. I'm a Marshall Goldsmith certified executive coach and the founder for Coaching for Relevance. Our vision is to bring freedom to potential in all those that cross our path. And one of the things we really want to do, which is aligned with our aviation background, is to help teams and leaders break free of the gravitational forces that are holding them back and their success back and help them soar to their altitudes. So that's our passion, and that's what we're all about. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. When I was little, I didn't talk for a long time. I liked things to always be the same. Anything new or different would scare and upset me. I was very sensitive to lights and sounds. It was almost like I had bigger eyes and ears than everyone else. So I built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. I didn't like looking people in the eye. It made me feel uncomfortable. I'd throw big tantrums over little things like when my socks didn't match. Sometimes I'd do the same things over and over. Until one day, I found out I had autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I learned how to live with it better. 
see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council.